get ready. We are going live right now. Tell your friends the transition is happening to Facebook. And what a blast we get to have today. And again, I just need to tell all of you, Ohio is here. Thank you, Ohio. Welcome, Jeff, from Perrysburg. And we are set. I just need to tell you, you know, this is a real treat. We have Jen. And I know we're going to have her for several more weeks. I can't promise you how many weeks. But I think we're looking at getting through the 18 SNPs in, you know, combination. So that that's going to be four weeks, five weeks, whatever that's going to be. Uh, we're going to work with Jen's schedule. But why don't you write that down? You can plan at least for the next several weeks that we are going to have. <laughs> we want her forever. Amen. Right. We'll get the tattoo. Jen for life. And uh, again, thrilled that you're here with us. Thrilled that Jen's here with us. And uh, so just know we'll have her for the next several weeks, but we'll put out a message if there's going to be a, a break in the action. All right. But again, these are all recorded. You can go watch all the previous ones right now on Facebook. So many people ask and, and they're there. And hey, Tuesday. OK, now that Tuesday's here, I can officially begin Tuesday on Wednesday. And uh, let's go ahead and kick this off, guys. Uh, just remember the, the, the commitment here from Euphoria here, I'll just speak on behalf of corporate, is truly for uh, nutrition to help your body create the best you. And with that, we're going to turn it over. Uh, Jen, the, the time is yours. Thanks so much. Thanks, Craig. Hi, everybody. I, I appreciate all of you um, wanting to have, have this happen. I, I got a lot of hits from social media saying uh, last week I was in San Diego walking around the zoo with my daughter and uh, you're not on and I'm like uh oh so I had to uh, make some phone calls to let everybody know that yes indeed I was on vacation uh, and we will be missing another week first I believe week in August I'll be speaking at a seminar in San Diego so we will need to uh, postpone that as well but otherwise I'll do I'll do my best to to be on here as often as possible so Kind of what we're talking about is, is per request of a lot of you when we saw each other in, in Vegas, which um, I so appreciate you all coming up to me and speaking with me and uh, introducing yourselves and telling me your lovely stories, uh, is, is lifestyle. Lifestyle cofactors within all these genetic SNPs, understanding that you have them and, and what they kind of mean and what you're taking and why has kind of been discussed. But how do we help support those? Because as we know, it's not just genetics and it's not just uh, supplementation. It's, it's so many different elements that are combined to help with overall uh, health and wellness and, and in lifestyle is such a huge approach. So the ones that I decided to tackle first are, are inflammatory and immune SNPs, right? Because if we, we don't help with inflammation and support our immune system, it kind of doesn't matter what else we do, right? Those are super important and what some of the most important to tackle first. So inflammatory and overactive immune SNPs is what we're talking about. The first one being our C-reactive protein SNP, right? Our healthy inflammatory response. Of course, as we know, this response to inflammation uh, can also affect our organs, especially our liver, uh, joints, muscles, tissues, all these different things can be in impacted by this SNP and by inflammation that's caused or can be caused by this. Uh, it responds in a, an acute manner as well. Even if I were to, oh, don't put this on myself, but I will trip or, or something, and my body would immediately turn on an inflammatory and immune response to help protect and repair that area, right? So even that happens with any kind of damaged DNA. It also wants to protect and repair. We are self-healing mechanisms. Our body wants to fix itself, correct? So we need to make sure that we provide the right environment for our body to be able to do that. Uh, it can also be detected in chronic conditions as well, the C-reactive protein, like cardiovascular disease, right? And this is where labs like HSCRP can be measured. So we can actually measure this and blood work to see how high or low our levels are because we want a trace of this. It's important, but we don't want to have too much because that's when we start to see links with chronic disease. So that's something we don't want. I'm kind of going to run through these three first, guys, and then I'm going to go into some lifestyle cofactors because they're also very involved, right? Achieving our best, right? I love this picture. We want to make sure that we're able to perform at the utmost level to, as, as I always like to say, to kick more ass, right? Super important. So the next SNP, um, Craig, if you don't mind, that I'm going to talk about is IL-6 or interleukin-6, of course, healthy immune system and immune response, right? This is our on switch. 
this SNP actually turns on our inflammation and immune system, right? Turns on these inflammatory cytokines that happen during certain types of infections or trauma. And it's actually to attract other immune cells to say, hey, party's happening, let's go, uh, to help combat this infection or this trauma that we need to fix on our own, like I said, self-healing mechanisms. Okay, it can cause an increase in blood sugar levels, however, if this is too high or too much, right? It has, it has an effect on the liver um, actually re releasing glucose. So, so there's a lot of things that can happen from these SNPs, and we've already talked about that, but I just wanted to refresh your memories. Also, uh, it's very much so noted in research to have an effect on the gut and can cause things like irritable bowel syndrome. We all know things we take in impact our gut a lot, right? So we're going to talk about that a little bit. So what plant today bears fruit, what you, what you, you plant today bears fruit tomorrow, which is very true, right? So everything that we eat, I have a sign in my office that says every bite uh, you take will either fight disease or feed it. And that is very, very, very much so true. Uh, and the other one says you can't medicate your way out of a problem you behaved your way into. Those are two of the signs in my office right now uh, because they're very true. That's just saying that lifestyle has such a huge impact on how we feel. And then the final SNP that we're gonna talk about today, which would be our TNFA, our tumor necrosis factor, right? This is one of our off switches for our inflammation and immune system. Okay, so if this doesn't work properly, it can lead to chronic disease uh, and inflammation and chronic inflammation because it's you're stuck in inflammatory mode, right? So this SNP can be, um, can be a performance decreaser, as I call it as well. And it can be, um, it can kill your, your motivation, honestly. Think about it. If you're stuck in inflammatory mode, are you motivated to go to the gym and do things? Not really, right? It can damage your mitochondria. We know all about mitochondria. It makes you feel tired, right? Oh, it's just so tired. I can't. I can't understand why I'm tired all the time, right? So elevated inflammation can actually make us feel super sluggish, right? Can cause brain fog, right? I just feel like I can't, not as crystal clear. I can't think as well as I used to, right? Can also decrease our mood. It can make us just kind of be blah or man. We all have those days, but we don't want to have those, those little days that happen turn into weeks and months and years, right? We want to feel good. Uh, and can also affect our overall endurance, right? Uh, we want to be able to, to do everything we want to do and all these things we're going to talk about, okay? So it can also decrease our wound recovery um, and muscle recovery post-exercise. If you're over-inflamed and, and you go and you exercise, right? And we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, it can actually make it a little bit... Uh, a little bit harder to recover from these certain exercises, right? Another thing that I thought was cool, and I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys before, is how uh, tumor necrosis factor and IL-6, right? So TNFA and IL-6 increase your C-reactive protein. So there's a huge link between the three of these guys, right? So what I wanted to talk about a little bit with these SNPs and such, we actually found that uh, in studies that 25 to 40% of all the variations in the C-reactive protein and these inflammatory markers uh, is 25% is, is genetics, 25 to 40% genetics, that's huge. What's the other part, which is such a larger part? Environment, lifestyle, food choices, things like that. So remember these things, right? These are healthy immune responses though, right? These are healthy uh, responses that our body needs to have when our biochemistry is working the way that it's supposed to. We want these things to happen. So let's make them happen in a healthy way. We've already got the nutrition component, right? We're coming in with our pre and our nutrition. We're understanding where our variants lie uh, within these inflammatory and immune responses. Now let's tie in the lifestyle component, okay? So this is the biggest one, probably stress, right? I mean, who, we all have had stress. We all have stress. We can't take stress away, but it's how our body deals with stress, right? So some things that we can do to help decrease stress because stress increases inflammation, right? And, and if you have these genetic variants and these SNPs and you're stressed out all the time, or you can actually turn them on because you are stressed out all the time, right? So we want to make sure that we can take a deep breath. I always tell people three deep breaths a day, three at least, but at least try to get three and get some oxygen to the brain, slow down, take a minute, right? Stop and smell the roses, take three deep breaths a day. That's super important. Exercise, exercise is amazing not in excess, of course, right? So we everything in moderation, including exercise, um, 
we've found in research that about uh, one to two hours max three times a week is actually sufficient. Uh, anything over that and lots of people who are marathoners and runners, which I'm not knocking it, my cyclists who cycle uh, for long distances, can actually wear it down, especially if you have these genetic variants and make it harder for you to recover. So we wanna make sure that we exercise, but not in excess, right? Let your body rest, let your body recover, okay? It shows in studies to significantly reduce inflammation and inflammatory markers when we exercise in moderation, right? So here's our little guy here tying a shoe, getting ready to run, hopefully not too long of distance because uh, we don't wanna we don't want to overdo it. So hit or high intensity uh, interval uh, training is very good for, for these types of snips and for our body in general, as well as weightlifting. I mean, I, I tell you what, ladies, I weight train, I love it. I lift weights and I lift as heavy as I can. And you've all seen me. I don't think I look too too manly, hopefully not. Uh, but uh, it's important, right? And, and doing too much cardiovascular and aerobic exercise actually makes the inflammation worse. It makes it harder to recover if we have these genetic variants. So it's, it's better in exercise to do HIIT or high intensity interval training as well as weight bearing exercise. You don't have to lift heavy, just lift, right? It just has to be light weight bearing. Good. Angela, I love that you love weight training. Get back to it. Women do it. Absolutely. Men absolutely do it. But uh, yeah, so it, training is, is very important. Um, as well as, as things like yoga, right? Tai Chi, yoga, calm the mind. You've got the endurance and the strength and the power. But what about, oh, look at, look at Craig. He is on it, setting the bar. That's right. That's what we're doing here, folks. We're setting the bar. Yoga, deep breathing, stretching, all that stuff is super important with these snips and these variants. You want to make sure that the body can rest and heal. So stretching is super important to do as well. Meditation, Tai Chi, slow controlled movements, all that's really good for the body. So make sure that this is a part of what you do every day, even if you're just stretching for five minutes. There we go. He is on it. Uh, stretching for five minutes before you go to bed or when you wake up in the morning, taking those nights deep breath, super, super important. I know these seem silly and seem trivial, but I'm telling you guys, this stuff adds up and will help support these genetic variants if you have them and, or even if you don't, it's still really good to do this, right? Another one I tell everybody, laugh. Laughter, right? What's better than than laughing? What's better than than being happy, right? So it's 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 super important. We say laughter is the best medicine, and it's true. Being happy, being positive. See, <laughs> uh, that made me laugh, Craig. Thanks. Uh, laughter is super super important, right? We want to be happy and healthy. We want to make sure that we're trying not to be in toxic relationships and toxic work environments and, and, and being around toxic people. How many times have you been around somebody where you're just, you feel like they just suck the life out of you, right? And you're just sitting there and you're like, oh my goodness, um, get, get me out of here, right? Those kind of people, I'm not saying to be mean by any means, but my goodness, try your best to get away from those kind of people. Surround yourself by people who make you feel good, lift your spirits. Uh, like us here, we love to make everybody feel good and lift their spirits and, and make you feel good about who you are. That's super important. Healthy relationships, as we know, right? Man, Craig, you are impressing me. Um, healthy relationships are important as well. That's family, that's uh, relationships, marriages, dating, any of that stuff, your children, right? Your parents, all that stuff's super important to have healthy relationships in. All those things can cause stress and cause inflammation and turn these genes on and make it harder for your body to recover and, and, and pull out of these things. Um, sunshine, right? get out and get some sunshine. Even if it's just like right now, it's like a hundred degrees out here, you know, and it's, it's, you don't want to be out there too long, but five, 10, 15 minutes here and there, get some sunshine, just take a deep breath and take it all in. It's super important. You get a little bit of vitamin D as well, which we know is good for us. And uh, vitamin D is a really good uh, helper with, with things like depression, right? Uh, inflammation can cause our mood to be down. Like I said, we want nothing but blue skies in our life. We want sunshine and happiness. And I know this sounds so ridiculous, but it's so true. Um, other things, proper sleep, right? How important is sleep? super, super important, right? So it, it varies for everybody. Some people like myself just need five to six hours and I'm good. Uh, I sleep very well. Some people need eight to nine, even 10, and that's okay. Just make sure that you sleep 
good. You, you get a good night's sleep. You might not wake up jumping out of bed, but sleep's important because if we don't sleep well, that can induce inflammation and uh, cause chronic um, uh, oxidative stress, free radicals, and then there comes chronic disease, right? A lot of these things are, are fixed by lifestyle, right? So sleep is super, super important. Water, hydration, half of your weight in ounces, everybody, half your weight in ounces. That seems like a lot, uh, but once you get used to drinking that much, you, you, it just becomes a habit and you just do it. I carry around a cup wherever I go and constantly drinking as much water as possible, making sure I have refills. So half your weight in ounces of water. Of course, try not to drink it too late in the day because then in the middle of the night, you're gonna be running to the bathroom constantly and we don't want that. Uh, so uh, yes, sleep, of course, because that can actually um, cause these genes to activate. Hydration is very important. Exercise, but not excessive. Um, decreasing stress with things like yoga and stretching. Uh, letting your body rest and recover. Happiness, laughter, positive relationships, right? Uh, alcohol in moderation. That's another one, okay? I'm not saying don't have a good time and celebrate things. That's not what I mean. I just mean in moderation, of course. Um, and, and choose alcoholic beverages if you do drink that aren't as inflammatory as others, right? Don't drink the Red Bulls and vodkas, guys. Oh my goodness, please don't do that. If I see anybody doing that, I think I'm just going to melt. Uh, so, so alcohol in moderation, uh, sodas, get, get rid of those guys. Diet, I don't care if it's diet or regular, those cause an inflammatory response big time, right? So get rid of the soda pop, water, uh, things like green tea, even coffee, one coffee a day, as long as you're not adding a bunch of junk to it is actually great for these genetic SNPs and there's studies on it. Okay, so try to get rid of uh, soda pop, um, whatever you guys call it. Everybody calls it something different. I call it um, toxicity. Drink lots of water. Thank you, Craig. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Um, and and uh, another thing is smoking. That's right. So I'm, say, I'm sorry. No smoking, right? Don't don't smoke. Don't vape. Oh gosh, that's disgusting. You ever you ever be walking around and you're like, oh, cotton candy, and you're like, oh no, that's vaping. Um, you, you know, and it's like a trick, right? It tricks us a little bit, and everybody thinks it's going to be great because it smells that good. But no, don't do it. Uh, smoking can cause inflammation. It can uh, just jack up your C-reactive protein. I've seen people that cannot heal from things uh, because of smoking and because it's actually increased their inflammatory response and they can't bring it down. So, so no smoking. Um, the study actually shows that people who rate themselves higher, right, who, who feel good about themselves and don't have low self-esteem and rate themselves higher, a study has actually shown this had lower level C-reactive protein uh, in their blood than people who were had, had more issues with self-esteem. Can you believe that? That you can actually take a feeling that you have about yourself and influence a genetic SNP to turn on or increase the amount of inflammation that you actually have in your body by how you feel about yourself. Think about that. How important is just everything encompassed, our jobs, our lifestyles, how much we drink, how much we eat, uh, what kind of foods we eat, which we'll get into that as well. Um, exercise in a particular type and in, and in moderation, of course, all these things have such a huge influence on our inflammatory and our immune system. So it's not just here's your genetic variant and here's your nutrition, although I wish that was the answer a lot of the times, right? But it's not. There's this whole lifestyle uh, portion and part of it, it's actually, I would say 60, if not more percent of, of your genetic variants and how your body is going to react to things is your lifestyle. Okay, so foods, right? So let's get into this. I had a lot of people ask these things to me. I always tell them, avoid kryptonite foods, right? Anything that takes your superpowers away, don't eat it. So if you eat something and you don't feel well, or you're tired, or your stomach hurts, or, or you have a headache or anything like that, don't eat it. It's not good for you, right? Food is fuel. Food is supposed to help us uh, gain energy, recover, uh, and be able to do the things we want to do, not make us feel worse. So avoid those kryptonite foods. And if you don't know what they are and you're not sure, exactly. Food is fuel. I love it, Craig. Um, 
food intolerance testing will tell you exactly that, right? And, and there's a lot of practitioners out there that do that. And we'll talk about some tests too that maybe you should talk to your practitioners about. So anti-inflammatory foods, of course, are most important here. Uh, you can find a listing of anti-inflammatory foods all over the place, but just to give you an idea of what some are, of course, um, cinnamon, cruciferous vegetables, especially broccoli, uh, berries, which we see a lot of great berries, cherries, those dark cherries, those are really good, uh, fish, avocados, um, eating more fiber, turmeric, curcumin, sprinkle turmeric on all of your foods, you know, or, or mix it into a drink. I have, I don't have it here with me. It's uh, it's turmeric, it's um, uh, apple cider vinegar, it's ginger, and it's a little cayenne pepper and, and lemon. Squeak that thing back. I think it tastes fine. Uh, and it helps with inflammation and, and boost your immune system in a healthy way, right? Get in the habit of that. One to two ounces a day, guys, is all you really need. So just mixing together these little things, juicing. I have my juice in the fridge as well with carrots and ginger um, and, and lemon. Those are good things to have. Fiber, fiber, fiber. We do not eat enough fiber, right? So increasing our fiber intake is super important. Um, you want the rest recipe. Absolutely, Sherry. I will definitely give that to you. Literally, it's just fresh ground turmeric, some apple cider vinegar, uh, some fresh squeezed lemon, and you can do uh, ginger, ground up some ginger or do some cayenne pepper either way. And you just shake it up and it only has to be in a one or two ounce bottle. Um, and drink it back. It's not going to be the most delicious thing in the world. Uh, but it's it's good. And it's good for you. And every single thing, that's that's what I have. So um, it's good to get in the habit. You can even put cinnamon in it as well or put cinnamon in your coffee, right? Coffee is another thing. Yes, I said coffee. Don't go to Starbucks and get the venti latte with um, unicorn. I don't even know what some of this stuff is. It's, it's insane what they put into these things, right? That's right, Craig. We pay for sickness. We pay for health. Either way, you're going to pay, which will you choose? Uh, and that's, that's a beautiful thing to say, right? So Everybody says eating organic and eating healthy is expensive. It probably is a little bit more expensive than, than things like McDonald's and ramen noodles and such, absolutely. But you're gonna pay in the end, I, I promise you. I see it every day, you're gonna pay in the end. So eating healthier and making healthier choices is extremely important. So Google low inflammatory foods and maybe it's something that I'll get and I can put together and have these guys put on the, uh, on the Euphoria site for us or at least on the Facebook. By the way, hi everybody on Facebook, I'm sorry I can't see you. Um, low carbohydrate foods, that's another thing that's really good. A high carb diet with all these refined carbohydrates and sugars are just not good for us. Us. processed foods, just not good for us. They always say shop on the outside of the supermarket, right? It don't go into the inside too much if you don't have to. Of course, we can't always do that. And I understand everything in moderation, but just try to avoid those processed foods. If you're reading a label and you don't know, or it's got a huge amount of, of ingredients, except for your nutrition, that's important to have a huge amount of ingredients. Uh, don't, don't buy it, right? If you don't know what it is, neither will your body, trust me. And what's it gonna do? It's gonna react negatively. It's gonna say, I don't know what this is. And it's gonna cause an immune and inflammatory response. And imagine if you have these, these variants or these SNPs and you eat something that your body doesn't know what to do with and it causes even more of that, yeah, it's just going to be, and you do this every day, it's just going to be a continuance and your body's just going to end up building up this inflammatory response that you're going to have a hard time getting out of. So eating these foods is super probiotic rich foods, right? Kombucha, uh, not the best tasting stuff in my opinion. And I can literally only drink a little bit at a time, but um, anything like that, um, I don't do dairy, uh, except for like grass-fed yogurts and stuff. I'll drink that, the grass-fed uh, cow yogurts. I do like that. Grass-fed butter. It's another great thing to help increase our butyrate levels and help our gut and help our brain, help decrease inflammation. Put that carry gold on your broccoli. Go right ahead. It's good for you. You should be eating that. Some foods to avoid, of course, uh, a lot of red meats, especially grilled. Uh, grilled grilled meats are, the, are tough because they do add carcinogens. And I think we talked about this in detoxification. And I'll probably talk about it again when we go through detoxification snips. Uh, but try to avoid those, those grilled meats, uh, a lot of red meat. Um, I, I do eat bison quite a bit. I do like that. Uh, and that's what I use as a substitute. I don't really eat hamburger. Uh, I don't know. Do people even use that word anymore? Hamburger? Um, don't eat with that really much. Um, you know, the fish, fish are great. Fatty fish, especially, right? I, has anybody ever cracked open a can of sardines and eaten those? I, 
I can't do it. They're really good for you, but I just can't do it. So, uh, but things like that are, are really, really healthy for you in the morning. Don't eat if you don't have to, right? Intermittent fasting. Has anybody, has anybody ever tried intermittent fasting? Every day, and I know Craig and his lovely wife are doing it as well. I have my, myself a six hour window, which is a little aggressive, but uh, intermittent fasting is beautiful. It's a beautiful way for the body to be able to reset and not have to constantly be doing things, breaking things down and, and trying to you know, process everything that we're giving it. Give the body a rest, even just a 12 hour fast, right? So if you eat at 6 p.m., you don't eat again till 6 a.m. the next morning, that's intermittent fasting, guys, believe it or not. Sleeping counts. Take advantage of that. So intermittent fasting is another great way. I am a huge, huge advocate for intermittent fasting. Uh, I've done it for most of, I don't even know, for I would say for at least the past three years, I put a lot of my patients on intermittent fasting. If I think they can handle it, there are people who cannot, but we are healthy people here and I think we can handle it. So intermittent fasting, I'm gonna throw one at you guys that you're gonna adore me for, at least I adore it, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate is good. In moderation, of course, one serving, Eat a piece of dark chocolate every day, right? So dark chocolate is really good for us. It has great antioxidants in it. It helps fight inflammation. Believe it or not, dark chocolate helps fight inflammation. So eat the dark chocolate, olive oil. Olive oil is another good thing. Don't use it to cook with, but put it on top of things, dressing it with it, right? And with dressing, I use uh, olive oil and balsamic. I don't use dressings and it's wonderful. And they have some great olive oils that are actually really good for us. So. I know I have a few minutes left to go through some of these. I just want to kind of get and see if I can answer some questions. These 30 minutes go so fast, don't they, guys? Consuming one cup, one cup of coffee per day. Oh, there it is. Um, with no crap in it, of course. Like I said, not a lot of sugar in this and that. I put collagen in mine. Um, what type of collagen? Talk to me about it. It's one I formulated if you want to. I don't want to plug anybody else but Euphoria here. Um, collagen in it and maybe some MCT oil, uh, but put a little collagen in there and, and drink one cup of coffee, but actually has been noticed and noted in studies to actually reduce your C-reactive protein levels. That's huge. So in moderation, everything, of course, guys, no fast food. Don't do it. My fast food is if I need to find something, I'll find a smoothie place at least and, and try not to have them add extra sugar. Don't do the fast food. They use cheap oils and it causes an inflammatory response. It oxidizes in our body. Our body doesn't know how to break it down and use it, causes inflammation and wrecks havoc. So if you don't, don't do fast food, please. Uh, no high carbs, of course, or high carb foods, things like that. And no nightshades. That's potatoes, tomatoes, uh, those kind of things. Uh, eggplant, try to stay away from those nightshades because they can cause an inflammatory response as well. Bruce, good job. Ghee and butter, um, or ghee butter and, and NCT oil in your coffee. That's awesome. So again, caution with exercise, right? especially with aerobic, don't do too much, right? Good, high intensity training, uh, weight training, cycling, but not long distance. You start breaking things down and muscle down and causing more of an inflammatory response if you do that, right? Marathons and long dur duration uh, can actually make inflammation worse, especially the following three to four days. And if you have these variants and SNPs, Try not to do it as much. I know it sounds terrible, but all my marathon runners usually have problems. And, and I tell them just shorten, shorten it a little bit, guys. Uh, laps, things that you should have your practitioner run, right? Here's a quick few ideas. Hormone levels. Do you know that hormones are our natural anti-inflammatories? Testosterone, progesterone, pregnenolone. These help us decrease inflammation naturally. And if we have these genetic variants or these SNPs, we can actually have a decreased amount of these hormones right off the bat just because of that. So have your hormones tested. Uh, your HSC reactive protein, right? That's another one that tests for how much inflammation is in the body. Make sure it's HSCRP, guys. Uh, your CBC with differential to check your immune system. That's important. Epstein-Barr panel. I see I've seen a lot of Epstein-Barr guys uh, with these genetic variants. So Epstein-Barr, HSV, whether it's cold sores or not, HSV panel is good to have thyroid, right? These things can cause autoimmune. So have your thyroid and your thyroid antibodies. I tell everybody that. Make sure they check your thyroid antibodies. Thyroid panel, autoimmune panel. There's that dark chocolate. You're making me hungry, Craig. Autoimmune panels, right? And markers, things like that. Uh, your fasting glucose, have them check that. Food intolerance testing, right? So you know your kryptonite foods. That's kind of important. Microbiome test or gut test to see where your microbiome is. And last but not least, take your vitamins. Take your nutrition. Take your pre and your nutrition. Why? because these SNPs are noted to be affected more when there's a vitamin and mineral deficiency. Did you hear that folks? 
These SNPs are noted to be affected more when there's a vitamin and mineral deficiency. So take your nutrition. It has a lot of good vitamins and minerals, not only targeted for these SNPs, but targeted for you and to help you feel better, right? So I'm gonna do my best to try to put together some anti-inflammatory foods that maybe we can list up on, on Facebook or something. As long as these guys don't mind doing it for me, there it is, take that stuff. Take it, take it, take it. Uh, and it could actually help with, with um, influencing a healthy level of these, uh, these genetic variants, right? We want a healthy immune system inflammatory response. So if anything, what do we get out of this? Exercise in moderation, not excessively. High intensity training, weight train. Women go out there and lift some weights. Um, yoga, deep breaths, healthy relationships, sunshine, uh, laughter. Laugh your butts off, people. And yeah, do pull-ups, do those. That's great. Only the best will do. That's right. And that's exactly how I feel as well. Only the best will do. And that's what we're trying to do here is make sure we give you the best so you can feel your best, right, at all times. So healthy relationships relationships, get the labs checked that I had mentioned by your practitioners, get your euphoria uh, testing, DNA testing done, take your nutrition, um, and, and, and we can, over time, we can watch our body reset and work the way that it's supposed to and have a healthy immune and inflammatory response. I could go on forever, guys, but hopefully that was some good lifestyle things. And I'm sorry, I have to always have so much to say and I have to cram it in a little bit of a 30 minutes, sometimes less. Thank you for being patient with me. I'm sorry if I didn't answer any questions, I'll try to get to them on Facebook or at least address them. Maybe we'll just do an open questionnaire one day. So again, thank you all for joining in. It was a pleasure. Uh, Craig, I'm gonna let you take it from here, but remember guys, lifestyle is a huge cofactor um, in your overall health and wellness. Dr. Jen, <clears throat> Thank you so much. What a fire hose experience. I love it. People uh, chatted up. Uh, we got to get you connected with Facebook. It's so fun to see all the hearts and, and the likes and, and everything going up. We really appreciate your participation out on Facebook with us, on Zoom, all of our Zoom friends as well. Uh, what a fantastic day to have uh, Dr. Jen in our lives, her experience, her wisdom, and uh, the fact that she takes time out of her busy schedule, just as you do, to improve uh, your life and your health. And uh, that's our commitment at Euphoria. We look forward to seeing you next Wednesday, right, Jen? So next Wednesday's a go, right? Next Wednesday's a go, yes, sir. Fantastic. We'll, we'll see you guys next Wednesday. And uh, thank you so much. And just everybody, welcome to Euphoria, where being you never felt better. Thanks, Jen. Thank you.